Unless you've been living under a rock, then I'm sure you've heard of the so-called Democratic People's Republic of Korea, or just North Korea in short. I'm also sure that many people would have images of army parades, the government's Soviet-style propaganda, and portraits of the Kim Dynasty of leaders that have ruled the country since its creation in 1949. But what if I told you that there's a little more democracy in this authoritarian regime than you think? What if I told you that North Korea, technically speaking, is a multi-party state? Now you might rightfully think that I'm joking, but I was just as surprised as you might be right now when I found out this was the case. Today we're going to be looking at the multiple political parties of this dictatorship and asking ourselves, why do they exist? Alright, so North Korea has five political parties slash groups and four of them only exist to make it look like the country is democratic even though in practice these parties and groups are completely subservient and loyal to Kim Jong-un's party. That's it. Uh, that's all I have to say. Thanks for watching, I guess. Okay, fine. I'll go into more detail. There's obviously a little more to it than that. North Korea's parliament Congress, legislature, whatever you want to call it, is known as the Supreme People's Assembly. Right now it contains 687 seats, and these seats are controlled by three political parties, two independent members, and six members representing an organization for Koreans that are living in Japan, which is aligned with the North Korean government that is known as Chongryon or the General Association of Korean Residents in Japan. These parties and political groups supposedly rule North Korea as a part of a coalition government known as the Democratic Front for the Reunification of the Fatherland, or just Fatherland Front in short. Now I know based on what I've heard about democratic governments around the world, when there is a coalition, there should usually be an opposition to question the government's policies. But you gotta remember, that this is North Korea we're talking about. So of course the Fatherland Front is the only political force that exists in the Supreme Assembly. What did you expect from a country that only has one candidate on their election ballots? Anyway, let's break this coalition down. The biggest of the three political parties in North Korea is the Workers' Party of Korea, which controls eh, only about 607 seats. That's no surprise when you know that the Supreme Leader himself is the General Secretary of this party. So even if the Supreme Assembly was actually democratic, the other parties would have little to no hope of opposition against him. The Workers' Party was founded on the 24th of June 1949, after the merging of the Workers' Parties of North and South Korea. It is the oldest active ruling political party on both sides of the demilitarized zone, and it also controls the North Korean army. I don't know, I just thought I'd say that to emphasize how powerless the other parties are in the coalition. Speaking of the other parties, the second largest one is known as the Korean Social Democratic Party. This party controls 50 seats in the Supreme People's Assembly and is actually four years older than the Workers' Party since it was founded on the 3rd of November 1945, shortly after the end of Japanese rule. This party was founded by a man named Cho Men Si, with the intention of moving away from Korea's feudal past and eliminating the legacy of Japanese rule in order to create a new democratic society. That sounds all well and good, right? It seems that this party was actually founded with genuine intentions. If their slogan is to be believed, then the party stands for independence, sovereignty, democracy, peace, and the defense of human rights. Yeah, this is coming from a North Korean party, so I'll just leave it at that. Cho and his party were originally supported by the Soviets as the future leaders of a North Korean state. But after Cho expressed his opposition to the division of Korea between the US and the Soviets, he fell out of favour with the Soviet administration as they were pushed out by the predecessors of the Workers' Party of Korea. Many leading figures of the Social Democrats fled to South Korea and pro-Soviet leaders took their places. These leaders would go on to make the party a founding member of the Fatherland Front, which was junior to the Workers' Party of Korea. Their last chairman was Pak Yong-il until he died in September of this year, so the new chairman is yet to be announced as of the making of this video. The final party in this coalition is the Chondoist Chongdu Party, which has a whopping 22 seats in the Supreme Assembly. This party was actually a religious group, based on the late 19th century and early 20th century religion of Cheonduism. This religion centres around the belief that Cheon, the sky, is the ultimate principle of good and justice, 
which is known as Hanyulin. The religion was founded among the many peasant revolts that occurred during the Joseon dynasty in the 1800s in opposition to the activities of Christian missionaries in Korea. By 1945, Cheondoism was the second largest religion in Northern Korea. The Chongdu party itself was founded on the 8th of February 1946 by Kim Taehyung and it was the founding member of the Fight Away Front. By 1948 though, the party was distrusted by the Workers' Party of North Korea and the Soviet Union because they saw the party as a hotbed for counter-revolutionary activity due to the fact that the members of the party still had contacts with its South Korean counterpart. If you've learned at least some history to do with communist parties, then I think you know where this is going. The party was purged after South Korean Cheondoists called for protests in Pyongyang against the communist regime. Over the next decade, the party would suffer another purge and funding cuts until the party effectively ceased to exist as an independent group in 1958. The current chairman of the party is Ri Myung Chol. So in summary, on paper, North Korea is not a one-party state, but in practice, it effectively is. Since, like I said before, all parties and groups bow to Kim Jong-un and the Workers' Party of Korea. Thank you for watching, and I'll hopefully see you in less than 12 months next time.